Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks, first of all, for giving me this opportunity. And during this talk, I will uh, illustrate how in the polar bear experiment we measure B modes. As you can see, you will find many things in common with the, with the lesson of yesterday by Bruce Partridge. And I will highlight how in polar bear we deal with all the problems that were highlighted yesterday. So uh, this is, uh, I'm Davide Poletti, working at APC as a PhD student, and this talk is given on the behalf of the Polar Bear Collaboration, uh, which is a worldwide uh, collaboration involving many institutions from all around the world, uh, mainly from the US, uh, Japan, and from a con with a contribution also from Europe, mainly in data analysis, from uh, APC and CISA here, and also Imperial College. So this is the outline of the talk. First of all, I will go through the basics of the BMOD science and measurements. Then I will focus on the polar bear experiment and show you the results of the first season, and then conclude with the perspectives of the, of the experiment. As we heard many times uh, during this school, the CMB is a primary source of information for uh, cosmology. Uh, however, the scientific potential of the temperature anisotropies has been already fully, nearly fully exploited by several generations of, of experiments. So we are now moving towards polarization, both for improving those constraints, but also for getting complementary constraints that we cannot get at all from, from temperature. So what we actually measure from, uh, the, from the CMB polarization are the Q and U Stokes parameter that are, that are then decomposed into a gradient-like and curve-like pattern, uh, the E um, the mode and B mode. And here on the right, you see the, um, the power spectrum of these three components, temperature and the two polarization. And you can see how the temperature is way higher than the polarization signal and the E modes in turn are higher than the B mode signal. And therefore, measuring the B modes is, is not just a matter of uh, achieving this sensitivity, but also preventing the temperature and E mode power from leaking into your, your B mode signal. And this plot also shows the distinction between the primordial B modes, at, which dominate at, at large scales, and Lensing B mode dominating at small scales. The primordial B-modes uh, are uh, related to the gravitational waves at the last scattering surface because the scalar perturbations produce basically only E type of polarization. And therefore, B-modes are a unique channel to probe those perturbations and being able to measure the amplitude of those perturbations uh, at the last scattering surface will enable to set a, a, an energy scale of the inflation and me while measuring the tilt of the spectrum of the tensor perturbation would enable to uh, probe the consistency relation that many inflationary models predict. And, and so what about the Lensing B modes? Um, during their journey towards us, the CMB photons get uh, deflected by the gravitational Lensing uh, exerted by intervening structure here, and the net effect is a small displacement that you can see there between the um, CMB picture that we get and what the actual last scattering surface looked like. And on the harmonic domain, the effect is um, a mixing, a, a reshuffling of power uh, along angular scales between the uh, measured E mode between the measured power and what was the original power. We have an L prime uh, multiple contributing to an L multiple, but also we have uh, the e, uh, e type of polarization contributing to the B mode polarization, the actual B mode polarization measured, and those are the Lensing B modes. And we, ex we can exploit this correlation uh, in the actual CMB, in the CMB picture to infer this displacement field. Uh, and I highlight that this displacement field is uh, related to this uh, gravitational potential integrated over the line of sight, and therefore it is sensitive to uh, every parameter that can affect uh, structure formations, 
uh, most notably the total mass of the neutrinos or the dark energy properties. Here I show uh, the B-mod level, the lensing B-mod level for different dark energy scenarios. And so what's the status of the measurement? This is the status as of March 2014. We had only, um, we had only upper limits. And the actual constraint on R uh, didn't came from uh, polarization measurement, but from temperature measurement. Uh, however, we had major improvements uh, during this year. The 10 March, the polar bear collaboration published our results uh, at small scales. BICEP published the result at large scale. ACT-POL at small scales again. Uh, the joint collaboration of, of BICEP2, Kekare, and Planck cleaned the BICEP point from dust. And we got, a couple of months ago, the SPT poll papers. Uh, so you see that the field is very active. And these are the um, direct measurement of B-mode power in the maps. But actually, there are much more measurements uh, through cross-correlation by several experiments. So the field is very active. And all these experiments and others are upgrading their, their instruments. So many improvement, there will, there will be many improvement in the future. Let's now focus on the polar bear experiment. Polar bear is a CMB BMOD experiment uh, uh, located in the Atacama Desert in Chile. The peculiarity of the location is uh, a very big sky, uh, an access to a very big fraction of sky. Uh, and also the dryness of the atmosphere that makes, makes it very clean in the microwaves. And the target of the, of the experiment are both the lensing and the primordial part of the B-mode spectrum. Uh, however, for the first season, we focused only uh, on a very small patch, deeply integrated to, to get a detection. This is the design of the experiment. As you can see, the light comes here on the primary mirror, gets reflected on the secondary, enters the cryostat. Here it gets modulated by a rotating half wave plate and is focused on the focal plane. The focal plane is made of more than 1,200 uh, bolometers. Um, here you can see a picture of a pair of bolometers. You can see here the bolometers, which uh, is sensitive to all the power collected by these uh, directional antennas in front of it. And since those two bolometers are, sensitive, are coupled, coupled to those orthogonal antennas, they are sensitive to different, um, different uh, linear combination of the stock parameters. And most notably, if you take the sum and the difference of the two measurements, you can isolate the temperature part and the polarization part of the measurement. And I emphasize here the dependence on temperature because as the telescope scans the sky, those bolometers are read out hundreds of times per second, making the so-called uh, time streams of data. So then we characterize our instrument using uh, both ground-based and astrophysical calibrators. We use Jupiter for characterize, uh, uh, characterizing our beam properties and Taue in the Crab Nebula uh, for Mm, assessing the orientation of our uh, uh, bolometers once projected on the sky. And here you can see in this plot of the um, power spectrum of a time stream, uh, how um, by getting the difference of the two bolometers, we can get rid of this huge contribution in noise due to the atmosphere fluctuations. So once we have those um, calibrated time stream, we are now ready to build uh, maps and extract uh, power spectra from, from those maps. In Polar Bear, we have two pipelines for doing this. We have a first pipeline that which uh, doesn't correct in the map domain for uh, um, time domain filtering, uh, but do it directly in the power spectrum domain. And the other one which corrects already for time domain filtering uh, at map level. And having this two pipeline provides a way of cross-checking and validating the results uh, delivered by our tools. And so now we have those maps, and we are ready to uh, probe in some science with them. I will show you now the results of the first season. As I mentioned earlier, the, um, from the polarization maps, we can extract uh, an estimation of the displacement field 
from which we can compute the power spectrum. And this is what was done in this paper in which uh, we found a 4.2 sigma evidence of B modes. And I emphasize that this was the first measurement of, uh, of lensing B modes using CMB polarization data alone. And uh, of course, we can build also this kappa estimator, and it traces the, um, the gravitational potential along the line of sight. And uh, of course, there are, we can find also other tracers of this gravitational potential, like the cosmic infrared background. And therefore, we expect to have some correlation between this kappa field and these other tracers. That's the work done in this other paper in which we uh, correlated the, the kappa estimator of polar bear with the CAB map of, from Herschel and found a 4.2 sigma uh, evidence of polari polarization lensing and uh, a 2.5 sigma using uh, estimator of kappa field related to B modes. Of course, finally, one can uh, compute the total power, B mode power in our maps. This is what's done in this other paper, and those are the points measure, measured from uh, our maps. This led to a 97% uh, confidence level evidence of B modes. And uh, I emphasize that, um, as I mentioned before, that the big deal is not only achieving the, the sensitivity, but also controlling the systematics related to this type of measurement. And, uh, and in polar bear, uh, this is done in several ways. First of all, we can take the, um, the specifications uh, of our instrument and uh, simulate the uncertainty we have in our uh, instrument. So uh, we can simulate the systematic and inject it, uh, inject it uh, in simulated time streams, run those time streams uh, in, the, um, in the science pipeline, and see which uh, B modes, spurious B mode signal we get in our, uh, our B mode estimator. As you can see here, all those uh, different um, systematics are well below the B mode signal level and also the statistical uncertainty of our measurement. Of course, this, uh, uh, this takes well into account the systematics, the potential systematics that we already know, but what about systematics that we are not aware of? And uh, most notably, we would like to uh, be able to assess our, the quality of our data uh, without uh, looking at the final science product. And this was a, a strict requirement uh, in the polar bear collaboration because we adopted this blind policy in which we couldn't look at our final scientific product uh, before having accessed by other means the quality of the data uh, and perform the, the cut of our data. So we performed the null test. The null test, unlike the simulated uh, um, test we did before, are done on the actual data but they are uh, done by splitting the data into two halves and subtracting them so that uh, we expect to, re re to find a signal in those data which is compatible to the noise. So with no feature due to spurious signals. And this is done for several types of splitting of the data in order to probe different types of systematics. All those, system, all those uh, splitting of the data delivered something compatible with the noise we expect on those data. And here you can see uh, a flat distribution, which means that basically what we find, uh, all the distribution of this null test is compatible um, with the expected noise in those, uh, in, those, uh, in those tests. So what we learned after this uh, this season, first of all, we are very happy because we reached the sensitivity to get a detection. Um, but we also learned that we control the systematic, uh, uh, systematics at this level of sensitivity. And what we also learned is that we are now close to the B mode level uh, sensitivity. And from other experiments, we also learned that the foregrounds are, are an issue. And, and dominate the larger scales, the one that were proven for by, uh, thanks, uh, by experimental like BICEP or Planck. So how do we plan the future accordingly? 
During this year, uh, another telescope will be built close to the current one, and the next year, the, the receiver here at KK in Japan um, will be delivered at the site, and the focal plane of this new receiver will have six timer detectors and two frequency band uh, capability in order to begin to dis disentangle between the uh, signal and the foregrounds. The year after, in 2017, uh, the, um, the next step of the polar bear experiment uh, will be the Simons Array, in which three telescopes will scan the sky at the same time. The total number of uh, detectors will exceed uh, uh, 22,000. And uh, we will have also this other uh, channel for better foreground uh, uh, rejection. This is probably the most inter interesting slide for uh, the audience. Uh, this is the Simons Array sensitivity, uh, also including the presence of foregrounds. So uh, how, what we should expect, expect from this experiment. So uh, in, mm, using the multi-frequency high sensitivity of the Simons Array and combining it with other foregrounds guards like Planck and Cbus, we will be able to reject uh, this uh, um, foreground uh, level for the dust down to this level. Uh, and this will uh, enable to deliver a stro strong constraints on, on the tensor to scalar ratio or the mass of the neutrinos. Here you can see the current um, constraint and here are the forecast uh, polar forecast Simon's array constraint. Uh, and uh, uh, here below I report, uh, I emphasize the, the numbers without accounting for foregrounds. So this is uh, the, um, the, um, the target for the Simon's array sensitivity, but taking into account uh, realistically the, um, the foregrounds, this is the level that we expect to achieve uh, in sensitivity. And I emphasize how uh, in five years, the, um, the polar bear collaboration is quickly improving its sensitivity, moving towards uh, tightly constrained the, um, the physics related to inflation and other quest open questions in physics like the neutrino masses hierarchy and other more ex exotic um, scenarios. So this is the summary of this talk. I've shown you how the uh, B-mode measurement are a very active field nowadays and polar bear is playing an important role uh, in this quest. And I've shown you the results of the first season in which we delivered the first measurement of lensing B mode using CMB polarization alone and validated this result with CAB cross correlation. Uh, after the first season, the telescope continued scanning the sky and we already have those data and we are analyzing them right now. Uh, about the future, uh, the high sensitivity of Polar Bear 2 and Simon's Array will enable to probe both uh, the lensing part of the power spectrum and the primordial power of, uh, part of the B-modes and the multi-frequency nature will, re will enable to um, reject the foregrounds to high fidelity. So that's all I wanted to say and thank you from everybody in this collaboration.